Bolton was once Sin City, a haven for gamblers, money launderers, and prostitutes. Now, this border town is a city of ghosts. The entire community has left, and when they left, they took everything they could carry with them. We are in Laos, but the builders of this strange pleasure ground were Chinese. Its fate has not deterred other Chinese developers. South of here, a casino with a Chinatown attached has sprung up in the middle of the Golden Triangle, an area notorious for drugs. How will these giant new projects impact on the tiny impoverished nation of Laos? A border is more than a line on a map. It provides national identity, but it also divides cultures and families. As a scholar, I'm fascinated by the regions where countries meet. They are so rich in shared history, culture, and even conflict. And some are facing major changes ahead. Come with me, Farish No, as I go across borders. This is Southeast Asia's latest tourism venture, the Golden Triangle Special Economic Zone in Laos. It occupies an area of land that is larger than 1,300 football fields. There's a casino, hotels, and more than 70 retail outlets. It's a significant project for Laos and its close neighbors, Myanmar and Thailand. But the people in charge are not Laotian. They're from China. I'm told that inside this 24-hour casino, there are hundreds of gamblers, mainly from China. Most of them have driven from the Chinese border 200 kilometers away. The reason for this long haul? Gambling is illegal everywhere in China, except in Macau. So the long drive is no deterrence. For some, this is gambling heaven. We can't take the camera down to the gambling floor because gambling is illegal in China. And some of the clients don't want to be filmed gambling. It's a strange thought that outside the walls of this casino is one of the most notorious regions in the world, the Golden Triangle, so-called because it is bordered by three nations, Laos, Thailand, and Myanmar. The Golden Triangle is the world's second largest source of opium after Afghanistan. It's also Asia's crystal meth factory, producing more than 8 billion US dollars worth of the drug every year. To open any business here is a challenge, not to mention a casino on this scale. When your clients come here, uh, if they, when, they, when they see something like this, because it's, it's massive, it's huge, how do they feel? Well, of course, they will be impressed by the, by the size and the decoration of the casino. At the same time, they should feel that it is a safe place for them to play, to enjoy. So it's in, not uh, like a fishy, fishy <laughs> casino. Right. So it, it looks like a serious casino. Yeah, a serious casino. The company behind all this is the King's Romans Group. It's a somewhat mysterious organization, though we do know it's registered in Hong Kong. This place is officially called the Golden Triangle Special Economic Zone, and the Laotian government seems to approve of their investment. The zone is supposed to benefit the local area, but is everything here open and above board? Who exactly are the other investors? Where did the 800 million US dollars used to build this pleasure palace come from? Well, nobody really knows. Reliable sources, including the United Nations, have suggested that this could be a money laundering scam. But the man behind it all denies all such allegations. Chao Wei claims he's doing the locals a favor. <laughs> Now, 
大家想玩的来小玩一下，通过这样一个项目来替代经济，替代毒品。There's more to the place than just this casino. This is supposedly the biggest Chinatown in the world. Yet another way to lure Chinese tourists across the border into Laos. Well, it's a bit surreal being here in this massive Chinatown outside China. And it makes you wonder why anyone would want to leave your country and stay at home at the same time. I have many questions for this man, who is the vice president of this special economic zone. How and why is this uh, special economic zone important for you? We say the name special economic zone. We have something special. Mm -hmm. We have special policies mm -hmm. and special, you know, some we don't say law but mm -hmm. regulations. There's gold in abundance, but the designers haven't neglected their political duties. This is a red memory showroom. It's a very, very important part of Chinese history. Mm -hmm. And it's also the Lao is a socialism system. Right. Same, that's why we put this part. Oh. Let local people know about, more about Chinese history. Recent Chinese cultural achievements are also on proud display. Crossing Tiger, Hide and Dragon showroom. <laughs> you have to watch how watch the movies. This is a real tiger, but no dangerous. Would you like to go inside? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> What's his name? The name is, we, we, we say it's, we say it's uh, Peter. Peter? Yeah. Hello, Peter. How are you? See, he's answering you. Ah, yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, Peter's a bit excited now, yeah? you know. Okay. Please look inside, carefully. It's, oh. it's, a, it's a hidden dragon. Oh. Hidden. One feels the dominant presence of China and Chinese capital. And the people having fun here are mainly Chinese. So I wanted to ask the Deputy Prime Minister of Laos, Som Savath Leng Savath, what all this means for Laotians. But he declined our interview. I've discovered that although the Laotian government has a small 20% stake in the zone, it's all been signed over to Chinese investors on a 99-year lease. Not only that, but a Chinese army base has been built nearby, on Laotian soil. Its guards are just as camera shy as the Laotian Deputy Prime Minister. In other words, no filming. What we can see is this expensive little private army that protects the casino and its clients. The Golden Triangle is still a drug-infested badland. In fact, in 2011, the local drug wars claimed the lives of 13 Chinese sailors killed on a boat just like this. The owners of King's Romans take their security seriously, but they seem prepared to flout other laws. We were able to film these rare animals here, which are prized as exotic meat. Well, in this uh, special economic zone, there are all kinds of exotic meats uh, that are on offer including some species that are on the verge of extinction. And it appears that that's all that's left of the pangolin that's going to be on the menu tonight. It's illegal to eat pangolin in Southeast Asia and China, but with a mind-boggling price tag of 1,800 US dollars, this evening, someone will enjoy this unfortunate creature as soup. There is also other prohibited wildlife on offer. Why has Laos allowed this to happen in its backyard? And how is all of this going to change the lives of people who live here? Laos is a deeply religious Buddhist society. It's also one of the poorest countries in Southeast Asia. To develop, they're courting Chinese investment. The Golden Triangle Special Economic Zone is a conspicuous example. Here, Chinese tourists with money to burn can walk a tiger on a leash, feast on illegal wildlife, and gamble 24 hours at the casino. But will this investment from China benefit Laos? So, 
I'm smack in the middle of this special economic zone and special economic zones are where development is supposed to take place, transfer of knowledge, the betterment of life of the local communities. But has it happened here? The Chinese investors claim to employ at least 500 local people and I try to meet some of them. Can you tell me, where are you from? Yunnan, China. Where are you from? I am from Thailand. You're from? Yeah, Shanghai. From Chiang Rai? Yes. Yeah, Thailand, okay. Where are you from? Myanmar. Well, I did eventually find one local. His name's Wei, and he works here in the tourism office, as well as in the casino. How many people are actually working altogether, the staff? More than 2,000 people. Ah. Out of the 2,000 people working here, uh, how many of them are Laotians, do you think? Laos and more than, more than 200 people. About 200? 200, 200, 200 people. people. Out, out, of, out of the 2,000? Oh, yeah. Ah, OK. Just, just so Wee is one of the lucky few. He makes about 500 US dollars a month at the Special Economic Zone. The Chinese owners say they plan to hire more local people in the future. Though at present, I've only seen a handful. I'm beginning to think that the only way to truly understand the impact of the Chinese casino is to leave it. I make an appointment to meet Wei in his village in Huisai. It's the town nearest to the King's Romans project. Now, I think I'm in Laos. This is my house. Welcome oh. to my house. Thank you. Yeah, please. And they have they got big money. We shares his home with his mother, three siblings, and their children. His father died four months ago, and we, the eldest son, now supports the family. In many ways, we himself reveals the contradictions of what's happening here in the Golden Triangle. He was educated at a monastery where he lived a strict ascetic lifestyle for 12 years. What does your mother think about you working at King's Roman? So I think. Before I go on break leg, mm -hmm. and I ask her, and this, this can be already. Right. She says, that's better. We have job, that's, that's a good job. You were a monk. You were a monk for 12 years. How do you reconcile, you know, um, being a monk in the past and now working in a casino? It's, I think it's two different. Eh? When it was monk, we can touch women. <laughs> we can drink, go on, go home. Uh -huh. Now it's like a freedom rights. Right. We can go anyway. We can drink. Can talk woman, right. not everything. <laughs> After our interview, the family invited me to stay for lunch. The main dish is fried grasshoppers caught last night. Crocodile and pangolin are definitely not on the menu here. Some of the grasshoppers still want to escape, I think, you know? So they will take the wing out and then they will boil the water. For boiling is the grasshoppers. Grasshoppers, yeah. Oh, right, okay. After boiling and frying the critters, lunch is served. Mm. Mm. This is wonderful. You can't get this in Paris, I can tell you that. A meal of grasshoppers, mushrooms and sticky rice. Standard fare for the family of eight. Mm -hmm. Thank you, You're and, welcome. Uh, I'm sorry I ate all the grasshoppers. Yeah. I have to see you. Yes. Okay. Um, take see care. You okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. It's not far from Wee's house to the mighty Mekong River. Right here, on this old river crossing, we can see the Chinese juggernaut in action. These trucks are heading to Thailand and other Southeast Asian markets loaded with Chinese goods. And the flow of trade is about to get a lot heavier. Well, right now, I'm at the Lao Thai border, and it's literally a fluid border. But all of this is about to come to an end very soon because five kilometers down the road, a new bridge is being built by China, Laos and Thailand, costing 44 million US dollars. And when that's up and running, all of this will come to an end. The road leading to the new bridge has already been paved. This is the number three highway that runs from China through Laos to Thailand. Every day, hundreds of trucks and buses ply this route this highway is new and built with aid from China. With their new road came new businesses, hotels, restaurants, massage parlors, 
to pamper the hard-driving truckers. And something surprising, schools for local kids, all designed to educate Laotians in the ways of their mighty neighbour. Well, it's a brave new world and China has come to Laos and all over the north of the country, there are schools like this teaching Mandarin. So let's have a look inside. As with all schools in Laos, the school day begins with a reminder to students to be patriotic to their country. The children spend half their time following the Laotian national curriculum. The rest of the time is spent studying Mandarin and China's geography, history and culture. Why do you think it's important for you to learn Mandarin? I wonder about the future of these children. For their sake, I hope that learning Mandarin improves their prospects. But there is never any certainty about the future. Not far from the Chinese border, I made a troubling discovery. This was once a special economic zone, built in Laos by Chinese developers. Now, it's a ghost town. I walk along the Bataloi with an independent air. I'm in Laos, just five minutes away from the Chinese border, and I found something astonishing. Broke the bank at Monte Carlo. Well, it's really a frontier ghost town, and the entire community has left. And when they left, they took everything they could carry with them, including the roofs. Something went very wrong here. The sign says, welcome to the new Macau. There are clues everywhere. This place was once a gambling emporium like the King's Romans Casino, a border boom town for high rollers. It was called Golden Boaten City. Built in 2003 with Chinese money, it soon acquired notoriety. Gaming halls and brothels sprouted everywhere. Today, the city is empty. Well, almost empty. In this empty ghost town, there's just one lonely guardian. I wonder if he can tell me what happened here. ครับผมบุกเลยกับก๊อกเทลเด้ได้ครับน้องเองก็เป็นคนนครหลวงเหมือนกันเนาะได้ยายขึ้นมาฮิตเบียร์อยู่ที่ก่อนที่ขึ้
Sompong's family were farmers who lived on the grounds of the now deserted casino complex. When the Chinese and Laotian consortium built the special economic zone, the whole village was relocated here. All these villagers used to be farmers. Now, 70% of them work as cleaners, guards or labour in nearby projects. There are no more fields left here to farm. But there are talks to redevelop this area yet again. Chinese business magnate Chao Kun has some big plans. This is the blueprint for a reborn Bowton. It does seem like a monumental project, all the more so for tiny Laos. Where there seems to be a plan to build an 18-hole cross-border golf course, which means if I hit my ball hard enough, it will leave Southeast Asia and end up in East Asia. It all seems like an enormous development plan or a monumental gamble. And I've just seen what happened to the last wager. If the plan goes ahead, nobody knows what will happen to Sompong's village. They may have to be forcibly relocated again. A totem hangs over the door of the house to protect the newborn baby. But will it be strong enough to guard against the upheavals that lie ahead? Come what may, the villagers at Bhutan will have to take things a step a day. Here, on this fast-changing borderland, they must look after each other for no one else will. In next week's episode, Malaysia and the Philippines. A maritime border that's keeping families apart. I explore the clampdown that's affecting life on both sides. That's next week on Across Borders. So see you then.